Greetings world. We are Anon DK. We will continue with our All in the Family series today with a look at the Aldo Brandini family. Like the others we have covered in this series, the Aldo Brandini are of the upper elite ruling bloodlines. Those who control the lower elite we know as Rothschilds, Rockefellers, DuPonts, Collins, Astors, Bundy, and the rest. They are not the leading elite. They are the public faces you have been allowed to see. They serve their purpose to keep the others hidden. However, we do not care about the lower families as they have no power unless it is given to them by the elite. By these top families. So it is there our focus lies. With that we will waste no more time. The Aldo Brandini family crest is a blue shield. Blue which is one of the highest colors of the Illuminati with six gold stars and a gold stripe with Merlin splitting the stars. These Merlin symbols were used by the Zoroastrians. We will discuss them in a moment. Three above and three below. As we know they believe in the occult which is a belief in equal opposites. Thus as above so below. The light versus the dark. White and black and every inversion of these and more. We have exposed much of the occult mind to you in previous videos and hope you will enjoy the extensive exposure of it here in this family as well. We have previously mentioned their love of three and how and why this is used in all they do. So we will not go into this extensively in this video. As we know, these families all intermarry. This brings the blood leans to an eventual point where there is so much intermingling it is very repetitive to go through each family genealogy. They are all practically the same. But that means we have less people to find for each name. We have named many from each family already so we will not repeat the ones we have already covered. The Aldo Brandini have a palace on top of one of the seven hills in Rome naturally. The main family still own the original land they did thousands of years ago. Their hill in Rome is called Quirinalis Hill. The story goes that it was on this hill that Holy Shields landed when they fell from heaven. This would be the fallen ones. The palace is complete with pillars of Hercules. Atlas holding the orb. The star of Aldebaran. On his shoulders. And even what is called a forest giant. As we have mentioned in previous videos and will continue to repeat. No statue. No painting. No name of a hill. Came from nothing. These things all have very deep and specific meaning. Down to the colors they use. There are no coincidences. That is a term they made up to once again fool you and hide themselves. We must understand the terms. Signs. Symbols. They and we use and why. We must be vigilant and pay attention so we are not deceived. In the side of the hill behind the house on Quirinalis Hill, an area of the rock face is revealed and carved into it an angry face with the mouth is the entrance leading into the hill. We have seen these demon faces used for human sacrifices back to the days of Babylon and before. Nothing changes. And we have seen these same faces in properties owned by the elite. Those who have always done the human sacrifices to Lucifer through all of history. Remember the Farnese family had these faces in their gardens as well. Leading to tunnels in the hills which interconnect. The elite never have to be seen in public. The seven hills of Rome. The palaces of the elite. Are connected by their underground tunnels. Like worms they crawl in darkness. As we researched these tunnel systems one can see in satellite images of the entrance. A large opening on the other side of the hill as well as one directly across the ravine from it leading into the next. The oak forest surrounding the villa is stunning. Large old oaks looming high overhead giving wonderful shade to the dirt paths around the gardens and waterfalls. As one would expect of any palace. Which cost an exorbitant amount of money. It is breathtaking, as they all are, even in its current state of disrepair. Covered in giant paintings of their ancestors and hand-carved stone statues. Such elegance hiding their empty coldness behind the thin covering of beautiful deception. One of the major paintings of this family is the Aldo Brandini Madonna painted in 1509 by Raphael, showing the Trinity. 
Naturally, the three Luciferians and occultists always believe in a trinity. The Madonna goddess Isis, the child on her lap who is handing a flower to the third, a child with a cone of fur symbolizing Pan Lucifer, at her side. Each has the iconic and complete halo which represents the incomplete ring of Saturn Satan, which they worship. We are told the halo is for the holy. How easily we are deceived. It represents the sun Lucifer. Being present in all those who have won now think about the paintings you have seen which contain halos. Now that you know what the halo represents. Worship of Lucifer. Just as children in paintings and statues represent pedophilia. They always tell their stories. They tell them straight out and only give us a different narrative to deceive those who do not see between the lies. Pay attention. Can you see what is really going on in this one? Keeping in mind the red for blood sacrifice. The woman in red with the three. Three children brought for offering. The two men shaking hands over a dead goat making a deal. The finger points to the children as if it is not already obvious. Meanwhile the man identified as an elite by the wreath on his head. Hiding the sticks as the child watches him. Do you see it all yet? Or is this just what you call a beautiful old painting? These people were real. These children existed. We cover symbolism extensively and in our document L the Bloodlines. Other articles on our website. And in other videos we have done in the past. We will not go into the symbolism more here. But we must make an effort to break you of your brainwashing so you can see the reality you live in. Remember next time you see a painting magazine cover, CD or movie cover, pictures the elite produce for you. Realize who painted it and what each thing represents. Colors positioning, facial expressions, lighting, hand signals, and much more have great and serious meaning to those in the occult. It is not a joke. The masses are given a meaningless narrative of life from the time they are born. People are kept at a subhuman level of knowledge and way of life. It is not even noticed by most. People only function on animalistic levels. But even animals today, even wild animals, have more moral structure than most people today. People go by a store window and see everything covered in symbols and know nothing about the mind control programming they are under. The elite laugh at you every day. You were their symbols and acknowledge and worship their god Lucifer. And you do not even know. It is called deception. The occult plays opposites. Codes. Symbols. Signs. This is how they communicate. That is why movies and songs always have a meaning that most do not understand. At least not the first time they hear it. The elite laugh at you when you listen to their songs promoting pedophilia and human sacrifice and cannibalism. You can find these references in most every song on the radio today. You are already being programmed to accept it as normal for the next stage of the New World Order. And what is worse, you do not even care. You laugh and sing with the songs. Disgusting. If you would only pay attention to what you are letting yourself listen to, repeatedly, until it is stuck in your head. The programming is absolute and you have no idea. Nor do you try to stop it. Words have meaning. Or does it not bother you because they tell you it looks like this? And not this. We could make several extensive videos on all of this but there is simply no time and you must do your own work to find the truth. That is what your life is for. So pay attention. Who do you listen to? What do they say and what do their words really mean to them? Know your enemy. Find truth. Be human again. Another painting including an Aldo Brandini was done by a Domenico girl and a Eo and was the altar piece in a church in San Domenico. It depicts Vincenzo Ferrari, Sebastiano and Rocco with Pandolfo VI and his wife Violante Benivoglio his mother Elisabetta Aldo Brandini, and his brother Carlo, kneeling at their feet, 
The Aldo Brandini are of course Knights of Malta as are all of these elite families. The name Aldo Brandini comes from Aldebaran, also called Alpha Tauri in Hebrew. Al Barbaran in Arabic which translates to following Dana, the Fallen. This is the name of the Alpha, or Morning Star representing the Fallen Angel in the Taurus Horn Bull constellation. You know, the cow jumping over the moon. Because of its location it is called the Bull's Eye Star of Illumination. The Third Eye and the All-Seeing Eye which is the Eye of Lucifer. To name a few, Aldebaran is brightest star of the constellation Taurus. The star is often occulted which means covered by the moon. The moon represents Isis, the mother female goddess in a cult. The star of illumination is a class K star because of its magnitude its brightness. It is the 13th brightest star in the sky. This is no coincidence. This 13th brightest star has a burnt orange hue like a smoldering fire. If we had to choose the all-seeing eye of the elite family, I do not think you need me to point out which one makes sense. This star was used for navigation long ago and especially worshipped by the Magi. We hope remember this term for the ancient Jesuits as we have discussed it before. These families are all from the ancient Persian region, Babylon. They were kings and priests just as we see them today. Magi is a title meaning sorcerer priests, magical ones, and magic is only in Luciferian occult. These elite Jesuit families we have discussed thus far are Magi still today. The name has changed from Magi to Zoroastrian to Jesuit through time. The blood remains the same. The terms mean nothing. They change as needed. Just like history and science and religion they changing make us needed for deception. But let us continue with the Magi. The Aldo Brandini who were Magi, once found out for what they were, had to change and hide. So they named themselves as Zoroastrians. This is a very specific cult. We think it is worth mentioning the basics of the background here since this particular line. The Aldo Brandini of today are direct descendants of Zoroaster himself. One can only be a Zoroastrian priest by blood. Typical as we have noted many times before. This will also clearly link the bloodline straight back to the tribe of Naphtali as discussed in our document L and by this direct connection of this bloodline to the tribe Naphtali. That leads directly back to Cain thus proving once again. The bloodline's authenticity. And once again completely disproving and shattering the lies they have given to us in historical, scientific, religious propaganda, revealing the only one true living and incorruptible truth. To those who understand this, it is impossible to acknowledge the lies again. To those who do not understand this, most of you never will be able to, because you will never open your minds past the programming you have been given. You will continue to deny truth however it is shown to you. But we digress. Let us continue with these Zoroastrians. The Zoroastrian motto is Humata, Hukta, HVARSHTA, which translates to purest thoughts and meditations, purest words of power and wisdom, and purest manifestation and realization. These priests often called kings, had power over the rulers. These priests had the power to order crusades, grant invasions, divorces, codes of conduct, and they were in charge of selecting teachers, advisors and rulers, wives for rulers and others. Can you see the total control they had back then? They granted piety, passed laws, created missionaries. They also put in place the idea of divine blood so they could continue to marry within their families. Does any of this sound familiar to you? They allowed concubines which they selected more distant relations for in order to keep the crazy genes at bay. Selecting only the ones with the best of their blood to continue ruling and breeding. Exactly as they do today. Nothing has changed and history repeats and repeats. Because people are content to live in their dreams and lies while others suffer and die for it. In this time they created a point system which is a bit complex, to give people a certain amount of piety. These piety points, 
assessed and distributed by the priests, could allow the earner of them to be next in line for emperor priest, and on down the line, whatever you wanted to be, you had to have the points and be given the position by the Zoroastrians, much like today. They chose who has the most points at Bilderberg and other meetings. So if your family had been in bad standing with the priests, one could earn the points of piety needed to enter into their good graces again, through select good deeds, so-called natural selection at its finest. Zoroaster Spitama was the founder of Zoroastrian cult. He lived in what is called Raga in Avestan, which is in Iran and was part of the Persian Empire. Raga means plain, hillside. Zoroaster's father was from Atropidene in Midia and his mother was from Ray. His patron was the king Vishtaspa. He married Hophidi who was an Avestan hot priestess. He opposed the use of the Homa plant. He also opposed polytheism and an oppressive class system in Persia. Why was he against a plant and what plant is this? The name means the divine and according to ancient studies this natural plant's most dangerous side effects include healing on various levels, joy peace, intellectual stimulation, and was described as the best for the soul's journey. Accompanied by Doe's Truthness plant, the Homa plant has been kept illegal across the world to this day by the elite. So what do we call it now? We know it as marijuana and it has been proven to make brainwashing and mind control techniques ineffective. Think about it. Zoroaster's followers spread quickly and fire temples were built in Armenia in his honor which led to the rise of the Achaemenid Empire. Zoroaster Spitama was finally murdered and of course named a prophet. Jamaspa who married his daughter and was a devout disciple and became Zoroaster's successor. Zoroaster is depicted wearing white robes, holding a divarza which is a steel rod crowned by a bull's head, which only priests carry in their installation ceremony, and a bar some also called bearsman or wand, a bundle of sticks. The number of sticks differs depending on the ceremony, which is also only used by the highest priests. He is typically seen with hands raised using the hand symbols of the occult. The Zoroastrian symbol is easily recognized today and is called the Faravahar. The ones and other trinkets are used in occult ceremonies to this day. King Darius who we see here, was one of many kings deceived by the Zoroastrians and wrote of them saying, I smote them and took prisoner nine kings. One was Gamada by name, a Magian. He lied. Thus he said, I am Smritis the son of Cyrus. One Asina by name an Elamite. He lied. Thus he said, I am king in Elam. One not in Tubal by name. A Babylonian. He lied. Thus he said, I am Nebuchadnezzar the son of Nabonidus. Three kings. Three lies. Years later, during Alexander's invasion of Persia, Cyrus's tomb was broken into and looted. Cyrus like Alexander dislike the Magi. When Alexander reached the tomb he was horrified by the manner in which it had been treated and put the Magi on trial. Some write that Alexander put the Magi on trial in an attempt to undermine their influence and display his own power. Through time many have tried to stand against them, but far too many are willing to live in lies and allow them to continue. In 530 BC Cambyses II the son of Cyrus was in Egypt when the Zoroastrian priests, then called Magi usurped the throne. Gamada one of the high priests, ruled for seven months. The Magi though persecuted continued to exist, and a year following the death of the first Gamada a second named Vaya's daughter attempt another coup. Things go on like this in these ancient times constantly, making it quite an exciting educational experience. One priest of this bloodline, Cartier led a crusade to purify Zoroastrianism to obliterate what he saw as heresies. The elite have always been the leaders of the crusades. He carved the Zoroastrian teachings on rock faces of mountains, which can still be seen in Iran and throughout the Middle East today.
The Zoroastrians believe fire was sacred and Kartir limited the use of fire by the Jews of that date including flames used in lamps. They tried to dominate education among the real Jews and destroyed synagogues, and did many inhumane things to them, as they always have. One historian al Sharastani describes the Majusia Magi as having three sects. The three are the Kayumarfiya, the Zoraniya, and the Zoradishtiya, of which the last were the only true followers, those of the true blood. The teachings of Zaroster can be found in the Quran. Shortly before the birth of Muhammad, his soon to be disciples invaded Persia, came in contact with the Zoroastrian people, and learned their teachings. They at once came to the conclusion that the original Zoroaster was really a divinely inspired prophet and taught all they knew to Muhammad. Muhammad then traveled to study and become a disciple of Zoroaster's teachings. They adopted all of the teachings of the sorcerer and erased his name from their copies of the documents, creating Muhammad as the new Zoroaster, as one such verse of many in the Quran explains, and we did send apostles before the there are some of them that we have mentioned to thee and there are others whom we have not mentioned to thee. The Muslims treated the founder of Zoroastrianism as a true prophet and believed in his religion and other inspired creeds, and thus according to the Zoroastrian prophecy, protected the Zoroastrian religion. Zoroastrians later educated the Greeks, the Asians and many others since they always put an emphasis on being missionaries, infecting the world as they continue to do today. Now as we can see being a Zoroastrian missionary often required one to not mention that he was Zoroastrian they lived in secrecy and by oath, again, as they still do today. After a few hundred years of their bloody rule when the Persian Empire fell, they spread out and changed their names. As always, this is where the Pharisees, Fraters Arvils, Jupiter Amand and others come in. If you do not understand the elite then you will never see their links. They use multiple names, different spellings of those different names. So one must look deeper and not be confused by changing of names and turns. When they did this a while ago they called it the mandolin effect. And the masses believed that insanity and look no further as to who is rewriting the history. One elite group of the Zoroastrians when they were dispersed at the fall of the Persian Empire formed in the Taurus Mountains and called their territory Ulba. Ajax was high priest of Ulba from 27 BC to 14 at and united with Rome which was under the rule of his cousin Augustus. Augustus brought the priests back to power and the lineage is easy to follow just by looking at the rulers of Rome and who they were replaced by those of the bloodlines. From here we have explained how they took over the Vatican and have controlled it to this day so we will not go into detail on that here. Augustus also formed alliances with Herod and Alexander. Since the Roman Empire was so expanded each new edition still had a ruler of its own now placed under the rule of Caesar. You will find most of them are priests. Like Archelaus who was a Cappadocian high priest and ruled his area the same time his cousin Ajax was in power, as we mentioned before in our documents. The Magi in the Christmas story everyone knows. The three wise men were Zoroastrian priests. High priests called kings. The three Magi have never been named officially, but we have found them. These three Magi are the only high priests who fit all of the requirements extensive knowledge of astrology, practicing advanced sorcery, strong ties to Herod who hired them to spy on all male births in that time because of his paranoia, and of course of the elite bloodlines. These are the only ones who fit the description and were in the correct locations, educations, and positions during 1 BC their names are Joasar and Bohis. Eleazar ben Bohus and Joshua ben Sai. This is confirmed by historians like Josephus and other record keepers of the time. As all facts we document and give to you, they did not complete Herod's command to bring the child to be murdered, but rather helped the family escape to Egypt until it was safe to return. But that story is for another time. The philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche writes of the teachings of Zoroaster having been a Zoroastrian himself. 
Irish poet William Butler Yeats and his wife claimed to have contacted Zoroaster through a copyright ants. Hitler wrote many time of Zoroaster using his teachings in many of his experiments. In Manhattan, New York, the appellate division of the Supreme Court of New York has a sculpture of Zoroaster towering over the building as well as at the Rockefeller Memorial Chapel in the campus of the University of Chicago. Does one ever wonder who those people are the government's place on top of huge important buildings? Many government protected archaeological sites contain Zoroastrian writings, symbols, statues and other monuments, and most are in Iran, Turkey and the other countries once included in the Persian Empire all that happens today can be easily explained if one would really look at history. The devil is in the details. The maps and the agendas the elite go by today are no different than those they carried out in time past. Sites such as Kabanai Zartasht which is the cube of Zoroaster the black cube of Saturn. The black stone is used for satanic altars used to sacrifice children. A monument at NAQSHE Rustam and the seventh wonder of the world. Mausoleum at Halicarnassus or Tomb of Mausolus in Turkey are perfect examples of some of the earliest icons the Jesuits still recreate today. Their history again is so filled with important details it is difficult to decide which ones to mention here. We will continue on now as the history of this line has been reasonably established. Now can you remember the 13th brightest star we discussed earlier called Aldebaran? We will continue with this now. In 1972, NASA sent a message to extraterrestrials. They sent the signals to this star specifically. Aldebaran is one of the four royal stars of the ancient Persians the Magi the Jesuits. The others are Antares and Scorpius, Regulus and Leo and from Alhot and the Southern Fish. As one story goes, Aldebaran was a fallen angel who attempted to seduce an Assyrian queen in the form of a bold man. You will notice these such stories are the same for each family though the half-breed is different. Some are fish men others are goat men and this family prefers bulls. The Aldo Brandini of today have massive orgies, which Stanley Kubrick has been present for multiple times, getting his inspiration for eyes wide shut while naturally it had to be kept extremely subdued to viewers. There is a portrait of Kubrick inside the main hall of the Aldo Brandini home, with his autograph giving thanks to the Aldo Brandini family for supporting his films. Picasso fellow Jesuit and funded by the family, based his Taurus paintings off of the orgies held at their castles and lodges. The Taurus represents the Pope, who is always and has always been present. Around 1360 we see Giorgio Aldo Brandini who married Margarita Berlinger and had two sons. Their son Jacopo and his wife Juliana had one son named after Jacopo father. Giorgio. Aldo Brandino Aldo Brandini yes the names do get nauseating. Was born in 1388. He married Margarita Orlandini and they had two sons. Giovanni and Salvestro. Sal married twice with one son from each marriage. Pro and Aldo Brandino. Pro had a son who became a cardinal. Again, as we mentioned earlier. Keep in mind everyone in these lines whom we mention here are Knights of Malta. They are all Jesuits. The son of Antonio Bevilacqua the Count of Macastorna was born in 1571 he became Cardinal Code Bonifacio Bevilacqua Aldo Brandini you may notice we are skipping many years here. This is because it is so easy to look up these people to find more should you wish to do so with the info we divulge here. In 1545 Jacopo Aldo Brandini great great grandson Gian Francisco Aldo Brandini was born his only brother Senzio became the cardinal. Gian Francisco married Olimpia Aldo Brandini Princess of Rosseno Calabro. They had six children. Their daughter Margarita married Ranisio I Farnese Duke of Parma and Piacenza. One of their sons Silvestro Aldo Brandini became the cardinal. Naturally. And his sister Lucrezia Aldo Brandini married Marino I I Carasiolo the third prince of Avellino. Elena Aldo Branzini married Antonio Carafa Gonzaga Colonna Duke of Sabinetta. 
Giorgio Aldo Brandini Prince of Rosseno and Sarsina married Ippolito Lodovisi. Ippolito Aldo Brandini was born to them in 1592 and became Pope Clement VIII. Ippolito Aldo Brandini's cousin, who is called his brother, became Cardinal Giovanni Aldo Brandini. Since he was a child, his handler was Philip Neri. When Aldo Brandini became Pope, Neri replaced himself as his guide with Baronias. Aldo Brandini reluctantly made him cardinal and confessed to him daily. He implemented the 40 hours devotion. This is a written prayer lasting 40 hours. Pro Aldo Brandini and his count Cincenzio Passeri Aldo Brandini were made cardinals by their uncle Clement VIII. He founded the Cangio Clementino in Rome as well as the Cangio Scazis. He revised, meaning changed, edited, altered, many documents. He was a very busy pope. There were wars he ended by deploying the church's army as well as replacing a few kings and queens who were disagreeable. Pope Clement VIII murdered Pope Francesco Sensi and his wealthy family, who had various estates and property. Pope Chinna's children were arrested for the murder of their father. His son, Giacomo was quartered with a mallet. His limbs were hung in four quarters. His daughters Lucrezia and Beatrice were beheaded. Pope Clement VIII then gave the properties of the Sensi to his family the Aldo Brandini of course. He also burned philosopher Menaccio at the stake for being a heretic. Some papal laws Pope Clement VIII passed are as follows. The Comsi e Pax Idea on February 28, 1592 which forbid the long-established Jewish community of Avignon to sell new goods, which forced them to make less income by only being allowed to have thrift shops. Next he passed the Kekanet of Dirata passed into law on February 25, 1593 confirmed the Bull of Pope Paul III, from the 1540s, which established a ghetto for the community of Jews in Rome. Giovanni Aldo Brandinius Clement VIII passed a Hebriorum Gens, February 26, 1569 which banned Jews from dwelling outside of the ghettos of Rome. Ancona and Avignon thus ensuring that they remained city dwellers with no property of their own. With Cumhi and Briorum Malisha he created a ban on Jews altogether. A few days later he forbade the reading of the Talmud. Clement VIII referred to the Jews as Keka, which means blind obstinacy. Today Jesuits, Nazis and other anti-Semites still use the derogatory term, pronounced Kak. Some of the people he murdered includes about 900 so-called witches, who were in reality female heretics, those who stood against the rulers. All were burned at the stake. Scientist philosopher Giordano Bruno was burned at stake in Rome. 600 more people including young children were burned at the stake and many more are brutally tortured. During this time the Jesuit order formed the very Nagdeel Steintisch Kampanis or Vakken Dutch which is the Dutch East India Company, the purpose of which was to establish trade monopolies for the exploitation of goods and materials identified by Jesuits disguised as missionaries throughout Asia. Today we call it the TPP. The funds gained by such trade were used to further the Jesuit order and the Roman Catholic Church. The Vak was the first international corporation with shares. It expanded their international drug cartel by shutting down anything outside the agreement. It created the commercialization of poppy harvesting for opium trade to China and Europe. This always goes hand in hand. The Silk Road was busted because it had been successful out of the clutches of the elite. The agenda today is more cyber surveillance and laws. They need order control and they have been successful in getting every person in the world on the internet. One source. Only one thing to control now in order to control every person in the world. Welcome to the New World Order. Pope Clement VIII. Aldo Brandini died in 1638 to every own's relief. Giorgio Aldo Brandini and Dipolita had one daughter. Olympia Aldo Brandini in 1623 as you see they not only intermarry but use the same names repeatedly making it difficult to follow through the years without being slightly cross-eyed. 
She was Princess of Rosseno and married Paolo Borghese, son of Camilla Orsini. They had five children, one of whom, Giovanni Battista Borghese, was the second prince of Simona after Paolo's father. In 1647, Olimpia remarried Camillo Pamphili, the Prince of San Martino, while Simino and Valmontone, Duke of Carpenito and Montlano and Marcus of Montecovillo. They had five children as well, including Cardinal Vendetto Pamphili and Giovanni Battista Pamphili, Duke of Carpenito. In 1667, Alessandro Aldo Brandini was born and became Cardinal in 1730 until his death in 1734. Following Olympia Aldobrand in this line is not difficult as it takes us from the first prince, her husband, down to Francesco Paolo Borghese the seventh prince of Simona who was born in 1776. He married Countess Adele of La Rochefoucauld and they had four children. The eighth prince, Marcantonio Borghese, Scipione Maria Giovanni Battista Borghese who was Duke of Salviati and Marcus of Matri and Bocciagiano daughter Luisa Anna Maria Borghese Aldo Brandini and Camillo Aldo Brandini who became the first Prince of Aldo Brandini. Born in 1816 he had three children with wife Marie Flor Pauline Princess of Arenberg and two with his second wife, Maria Catholic Countess of Hunyadi. The fourth Prince. Camillo Aldo Brandini was born to Baroness Louise and Prince Clemente Aldo Brandini in 1945 Rome. Married to Stefania Gallerati Scotti they had three children. Marchesa Senzia Aldo Brandini, Princess Pola Aldo Brandini and Clemente Aldo Brandini. Princess Pola Aldo Brandini married Angelo Federico Arcelli and they have three children. Maria Camilla Lavinia Arcelli. Francesca Stefanina Arcelli and Laura Louisiana Arcelli. There are many other modern day Aldo Brandini, such as Princess Olympia Aldo Brandini, whose husband is David Ruth's child. They live in Normandy, France at Cato Diria most of the time. They have four children Lavinia and Alex de Ruth's child. Stephanie Anne Marie de Buffevent, who is married to Augustin de Buffevent. Alexandre Guy Francesco de Rothschild married to Olivia Bordeaux-Rolt. Alexandre is going to take control of the family business this year. And the youngest, Louise Lily B. Copyright actress de Rothschild. Alexandre Guy Francesco de Rothschild has already taken control of the family's banking industry as of 2008 as head of Paris Orla Copyright and Proprietary Investments with locations worldwide controlling not only the banking systems of France, Switzerland, Germany the United Kingdom, including the colony of the United States, but controlling many more. The Rothschild family is extremely well exposed so we will not waste time on them. However we strongly urge you, should you somehow not know about them, to go find all that they are involved in. They control many things ranging from wines to geoengineering to all of your banking abilities and much more. Remember, for all of their wealth and power it is only a shiny coating of an empty shell. They are controlled and only have power because it is given to them by these upper elite families. There is no deeper worth to them. No deeper power. It is also easily dissolved. They are just slaves. Everyone listed here was a Jesuit and Knight of Malta as well as in the Order of St. John of Jerusalem. The entire bloodline is. These are the elite. The very top of the pyramid. Remember. If we shine the light of truth. Then we can blind the eye. We must not be deceived. You must unlearn what you have learned. Purge your mind. Be cleansed in truth. For we do not fight kings and princes. We fight all of the forces of evil, and in the end, we win. Expect it.